Okay. Okay, we're holding on page Zion, the first column, second paragraph. Quoted from Rebbe Lezer says, the person who has gasa ruach in Afro Nino Letchias Amesin, his dust will not awaken to Letchias Amesin, will not be resurrected. Just stuff in the paragraph, beginning of the paragraph again, second paragraph. Omar Rebbe Lezer called Odom Sheish Bogas Ruach in Afro Nino, Shinema, Hokitsu Granu Shochne Yofer. Shochne Yofer, those who lie in the dust, but those who are shochin, the dwelling of the dust. One who actually, he conducts himself as he's the neighbor of the dust, meaning humility, he conducts himself with humility, his dust will awaken. He says, within the understanding of wisdom, it makes sense that that person will not be be a resurrected. He says, the dust is something which is specific that from there, that's where they rise. They rise, they become alive. What is the earth? What, what does the earth represent? Give forth bounty. It gives forth. So, it's giving forth people who who are no longer alive, new life is coming from the earth. As vegetation comes forth from the earth, earth represents giving forth life. Ubrisa olam hakolohim in oritz. Time of creation, everything came from the earth. It's Kamar Shabbos. It says, Bekomosom, they came straight out of the ground in that form. At, at whatever age it was, it was meant to be. Well, 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 it's not thinking, it's a reality. It's based on psukim. Well, let me ask you a question. The text of, when you say eat bread, what, what's the text of bracha? What's the text of bracha on bread? Hamotzi lechem yards. You see bread growing out of the ground? So what, where is that the text? No, because ultimately, after the coming of Mashiach, bread's coming straight out of the ground. You won't have to, you won't have to mill it. You won't have to bake it. Straight out of the ground, the finished product comes. It happened. This is before the Chet of Adam Rishon. This is before there was any, any impurity in existence. Naturally, things came straight out of the ground. I mean, once they were created, the animals, right? Once life, then it perpetuated itself from, through procreation, like a human being, right? Adam and Chavu created, and afterwards, everything procreated afterwards, right? There was a mitzvah, Puravu, right? That was given to, uh, to all, all animals. It wasn't only the human being. Rashi cites it. Ach. He says, Ach, because he was late. He was bitten. It's a question he asked. There was one, cu there was one couple. So if one would die, that's the end, of, the end of the species. The end of the species. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You know who says that answer? Rabaran Kutla. No, not yet, no, but it came from the ground. He could have right. said, let it be. Let it be light. There was light, right? Let it be animals. They're animals, right? right. So, so good. Same thing. O Medrash, everything came from the earth. Now you can appreciate that it's earthy, right? He's an earthy person, right? A human being. So the question is, it's that means lacking in refinement, but means lacking in, in spirituality. The spiritual element doesn't in any way display itself 
and what, whoever that person is. That's the earthiness, you know? It isn't, it is. Of course, a human being is more than earthy. An animal is earthy. It's all earth. That's all it is. Now that means he has, his feet, he has his feet on the ground. He has his feet on the ground. That's what it means. He's down to earth. That's, but he's not the earth. You say to a person, you're a piece of dirt. Right? It's not a compliment. Right? So the Medjur says, Even the sun, the sphere of the sun was created from the earth. You say to a piece of pottery, it doesn't radiate. Just as the, the pottery comes from the ground, it's, it's made of clay. So therefore, similarly, the sphere of the sun is from the earth. Yeah. He says, the earth, the physical entity of earth has relevance to every aspect of creation. Even things that are on, on the celestial level, the heavenly level. He says, the earth is in the center. It's always like the midpoint. It touches upon everything equally, everything around it. Everything emanates from the center. It's the same. That's the idea. They all are, uh, originate from the same source. That's the commonality between every aspect of creation. Geshem Geshem Chamishi. He says this comes to dispel those who refer to Geshem Hashemayim, the physicality of heaven. Geshem Chamishi. It's the fifth. You know, we speak the four elements. They say in heaven there's a fifth element. It's called Geshem. Geshem, not to rain. Geshem means something which is uh, substance. Gashmi, you know, s substance. There's, there's a fifth level. That's, that's on the heavenly level. He says, no, he, he's disagreeing with this. According to that, the source for the heavenly level doesn't emanate from the same source as the earthly level. Even if you say what you will agree with, they say, and the makeup, the physical makeup of the heaven is not the same physical makeup as the base elements of existence. Still, it started with the earth, but everything manifests itself differently from the earth. It's like the sun is a different entity than anything that exists, right? Because does it resemble the earth? Does it make a difference? But it emanates. Its origin is the earth. He said, we're not saying heaven is earth. It's not earth. He says, not the place to discuss this. He says, not the place to discuss this. He says, not the place to discuss this. This is Gemara also in Sanhedrin. It says that even if a person doesn't decompose in the ground, a moment before rec uh, resurrection, everything will revert back to dust. And then, at that moment, everything's resurrected. No, 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 no. Person, the Ovisak Ocean, everything, anything that, w any living human being that ever lived, even the grave, perfect. No decomposition whatsoever. Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu instantaneous uh, decomposition to dust and immediately everything is resurrected. Goes to dust, back to life, fully developed. It's based on this posuk. A moment everything, the dust goes back to, to dust. And immediately he begins growing from that. Saying something interesting. Why does he have to go back? He's saying, he's explaining, what does earth or dust represent? Growth, growth. Everything grows from the ground. So if the person, let's say, would be in the ground, fully intact, 
and it also he becomes alive. That means, but he's not coming out of the ground. He's not growing from the ground. Right? He's coming out of the ground. He's not growing. The body was there. It's just being concealed in the ground. Now all of a sudden, life, now the person's coming out of the ground. But at first it turns to dust, and now comes out as a human being. That means he's coming out of the ground. The ground is causing, the, is the location of the growth, of the development of the human being. It's similar to the plant. What does Tchio have to come from Ofer? It's almost like a Yesh you know? Creation is ex nihilo. You put a seed, it germinates, it turns literally, it rots to nothing, and when it reaches that level, all of a sudden, all life comes from that. The Ramchal in Der Hashem speaks about this. That a seed germinating is only symbolic of the reality of Tchiyas HaMesim. Everything goes back to nothing, and when it goes to nothing, then it becomes everything. And that's loss of love, that's Tchiyas HaMesim. Everything will back to nothing, even what exists will decompose instantaneously to dust, and from that, growth will come. Let's wait for it to happen, then we'll talk about it. No, there's no age. I mean, a person will come out. We don't even know what a person will look like yet. It's amazing. Right? We told it's a different, different dimension, firstly. It's, it's, it's different dimension because if you take a look in, in the Ramchal, all these things, you know, Olam Abba, a person, the accomplishments of his life, spiritual accomplishments, are evident in the person, in his Nisham and Olam Abba. When a person, if a person would do a mitzvah, and the effect of the mitzvah would remain with them, a person would, would become spiritualized instantaneously. Because the, the spirituality of, of the mitzvah would totally overtake the body, and a person would radiate. The person would, would, would no longer be a physical being. You become a spiritual being. Like Moshe Rabbeinu radiated, it would go beyond Moshe Rabbeinu. Every ordinary Jew doing a mitzvah it would be beyond Moshe Rabbeinu. So you can imagine Moshe Rabbeinu. That was in the physical existence. That was Moshe Rabbeinu. He radiated. So, but if you, you would understand the dimension of the, of the effect of the mitzvah is beyond. When, after the Tchiyas HaMesim, people are going to, the body will not conceal that, 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 that radiance of the Kedusha any longer. See, to maintain the uh, Chiro, the body has to keep its, keep, its, keep its ability. Therefore, it's a struggle between the physical and the spiritual. But if the physical is totally spiritualized, there's no Bechir, there's no choice any longer. Therefore, Hashem has to suppress that spiritual effect only to expand if the person dies. Or if the Tchiyas Mason, where there's no Bechir any longer, totally just expands and overtakes the person and the radiance is, is beyond. Okay? That's the Ramchal speaks about this. Let's see the halacha.